Hello everybody and welcome back to the only YouTuber that records in Ultra HD. Please use the 4K. My name is Evan Ediger and today we're doing a little Ask Reddit thread. Just kidding, it's a Reddit thread. On Ask Europe again, we're doing a couple of these this week as I still tumultuously try and find a way to buy a house in the UK. Today's Ask Europe thread in question talks about different idioms across culture that refer to the different countries of Europe. And I thought this would be very, very interesting going in. So for instance, in English, you would say to go Dutch, uh, which means to split the bill with a group of people at a restaurant. I've never heard that, but OP goes on. Uh, for example, it's commonly thought to be connected to the Dutch beginning stock trading and splitting costs among them. What random expressions do you have in your country that reference other countries? Uh, for instance, right off the bat, I know that in the UK, when you play a simple childish game of telephone or whisper down the lane, they'll call it Chinese whispers. So that's interesting. I uh, don't know what that's about. Also, instead of just doing the wave, you know, when you stand up at a festival or at a big stadium, everyone does the wave. In the UK, they call it the Mexican wave. Okay, interesting. Don't know why, but that's what we're talking about here. They reference other cultures, and let's see what we've got. First up, we've got Germany with einen polnischen Abgang machen, to do a Polish exit, uh, to leave without saying goodbye. Oh, that's quite interesting that it's referred to as Polish, uh, whereas I think in the UK, I, I literally do this all the time, an Irish exit. You leave, you don't say goodbye to everyone. As long as you've said hello to everyone, you kind of slip out when no one notices, you do an Irish exit. That's what I've always said. Brexiton, to constantly say you're going to leave, but never actually leave. Well, rest in peace, we did, finally. <laughs> Funny, we call it an Irish goodbye in the US as well. Ah, oh, okay, it was one of those things I didn't know if it was just the UK or if I picked that up here. Turns out, yes, Irish exit, not a Polish exit. In Hungary, instead of saying an Irish exit or a Polish exit, they say to leave like an Englishman. Angolazan tavazavid which is pretty cool. Same in Poland. And so in Poland, they don't have a Polish exit. They're like, no guys, it's the English that do that. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. There's also quite the lewd phrase, Französisch kann ich nur mit der Sprache hapert ein bisschen. Uh, I know French, but I have some problems with the language. It refers to uh, French kisses, <clears throat> oral sex, uh, which is called Französisch here. Interesting, in the, in the UK slash US, Though I don't know if it's as big in the UK. French kissing, you know, with the tongue. French kissing, we would use the French to refer to kissing with the tongue. But interestingly, in German, to say, I know French, but I have problems with the language, is like saying, oh, I know oral, but I can't speak French. <laughs> I don't know why, that's, that's really funny. Um, <laughs> I love uh, German expressions like that, like, I only know train station. All right, uh, another one with Germany here with Das kommt mir Spanisch vor, which means seems Spanish to me. If something does not seem right, like, oh, hmm, something seems Spanish to me. I think in the US we would just say fishy. I think in the UK as well, something's a bit fishy. I don't think we have one necessarily for uh, referring to different cultures, but uh, Germany goes on with also possibly etwas Türken, uh, which means to fake something, which Türken, Turkish. Uh, well, etymologically, it's not really clear where it comes from, whether or not it's actually related to Turkey. I think most people's association these days is with Turkey. Okay, understand understandably, Turkish people don't like that word. Fair enough. It's all Greek to me. That's right, America coming into the Ask Europe thread. I, I, that's pretty popular, right? Is that used outside of America? I assume. All right, in Sweden, they have Polsk Riksdag, which means Polish Parliament, which also means a meeting that has gotten so out of hand and turned into a loud and confrontative mess. Wow, what a dig. Whew, bit of Polish Parliament in there. Boom, just roasted your entire country's political system. Goodbye, Poland. That's a very accurate statement. All right, Poland's even like, yeah. Fair. Ah, and here's some background on it, everybody. So every single member of the Polish parliament during the 17th to 18th century had an absolute veto, which means as a result, legislation could only be passed unanimously. So that makes a lot more sense as to why that's entered the vernacular in a lot of countries around Poland. Slovakia says they've got an expression, Bulgarian constant, a term used mostly in construction and engineering for the number made up ad hoc in order to formally meet standards or requirements. Ah, according to a Norwegian, we have to do a Spanish one means to do something unordinly, such as to take figurative shortcuts. Spaniards, how do you feel about that? Does that make sense? Spanish people taking shortcuts? They also say the Swedish method is to do something idiot-proof, such as shutting down a machine by pulling the cord out. 
that's quite funny. So that's actually quite nice. Like uh, if you wanted to turn off your light bulb and you just shoot it with a gun. Maybe the American method, but possibly also Swedish method. The Netherlands have come with a dot clink Chinese, which means that sounds Chinese to me, uh, meaning we don't understand what someone's trying to say. Or prat ich Chinese, am I talking Chinese? It means something like, why don't you understand what I'm saying? I'm fairly certain I've heard this multiple times in the US as well. I haven't really heard it in the UK, but that is something definitely a big idiom over here. A town in Russia is something you don't care or think about. Honestly, as a teenager, homework was a town in Russia to me. To take a French bath means to <laughs> you only splash some water from the sink and you're on your armpits and your face. I, you know, I don't want to say anything, but it, it makes sense. <laughs> a French bath, just splashing a couple bits of water on your armpits and your face, done. I am le clean. Good to know. Drunk as a Swede means very drunk and can't stand on your feet. And lastly, unload American style. From the army, when unloading your rifle, you unload it by squeezing the trigger. <laughs> like, oh, I've got some extra bullets. Let me just brrrr. Done. Sorted. Bullets out of the way. Ah, interesting. In Denmark, they say, at vera grace katoisk, to be a Greek Catholic. And that just means you don't care at all. Wow. Do you want hot dogs or pizza for your birthday? Hmm. <laughs> I'm a Greek Catholic. Hacerse el sueco uh, would translate as pretending you are Swedish. And it means that you're pretending you don't understand something. Ah, so being coy is just pretending to be Swedish. For example, a kid gets a bunch of candy, eats it, and his mom finds out and asks him where it is. Uh, if the kid then says he doesn't know, the mom would tell him to stop pretending to be Swedish. Those Swedes, they're always being so coy. They know what they've done. <laughs> Sweden person says, I do not understand. <laughs> You are really in character. Supposedly, etymologically, it actually came from the Latin word suco, meaning shoe. So it was more like pretending to be a shoe, uh, but it's been more associated with Sweden over time. Yeah. Learning so much from this thread. Heck, if you're enjoying this, by the way, please smash that like button since dislike is gone, okay? Appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I mean, here's your CTA, call to action. Wow, influencer speak, he's so cool. Next up, we've got the United Kingdom. All right, guys. I better know what these are. When I was little, we used to play, here it is, Chinese whispers. Talked about that in the beginning. Uh, you sit in a circle and you whisper to someone down the lane, or whisper down the lane as they say. Don't know why it's called uh, Chinese whispers though. We use the phrase for people who have passed on gossip and no one knows it's true. I imagine it comes from our colonial past with China, probably. Uh, also, it's all Greek to me. Yep, that's definitely a big one. We had loads of French ones about sexuality, uh, but we don't use now. A French letter was a condom. Why? Really? Have you got a French letter? Oui. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Norway comes in with not a country, but we have the expression Helt Texas or completely Texas. It means going off the hinges and devolving into chaos. Not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, if a party takes off and you could fest in Valhelt Texas, the party was completely Texas. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it probably means uh, the cleanup is not going to be fun the next day. Not a country. Do not tell a Texan that. <laughs> Right, an Italian has lovingly just compiled loads of them for us. Here are some lovely idioms from Italy. We've got to smoke a lot, to smoke like a Turk, Turkey, interesting. We've then got to be perfectly on time, Switzerland. That's fair, that makes a lot of sense, uh, which it looks like to be punctual like a Swiss. Sure, makes sense. Uh, in Fila, Indiana. Really? In a file where one person is behind the other, Native Americans. Oh, a single file line. Uh, in the US, we call sitting Indian style, sitting Indian style. It's just called cross-legged in the UK. Just uh, thought about that. Oh, and then we have Americanata, or used to describe something that's over the top in an American way. We finally got one about the US. I can't believe it. Americanata, something that looks very American. Someone from Spain only just now realizing they're coming off very badly in this thread. <laughs> Dude, cheer up. In Portuguese, espanolada means titty. Hey, that's actually quite lovely. It's quite lovely. Who doesn't enjoy a good espanolada? In Turkey, we have the German way of paying the bill. Uh, it means when everyone pays for only what they ate. I have no idea why it's called the German way. Sounds pretty efficient, but also I'm the type of person that doesn't get appetizers. I don't get fancy drinks. So if all I got was a burger, I shouldn't have to pay to split all of you guys is getting all these giant appetizers, okay? I'm about paying the German way. Australia pipping in here with- Don't know if other English speaking countries use this, but in Australia, a Dutch oven is when you fart under a blanket or in a sleeping bag and trap the smell in there. <laughs> I mean, probably from the expression, a Dutch oven, which is, is a lovely little thing you can buy to cook with, but um, 
I've never ever heard of it called that. I think I've heard of it as hot boxing, usually referred to when you you fill a room with weed, but you can hot box your blankets with some farts. In Greece, they have be an Englishman, be punctual. That's hilarious. Speaking Chinese, it's all Greek to me. So basically they just had to find another way of saying it. And Scottish shower, something good followed by something bad and vice versa. I'm just trying to relate to Scottish shower is, is when you experience something good and then immediately experience something bad or vice versa. How's that? That's Scottish people. Do you understand? Are your showers that good slash bad compared to normal life? If you are someone that enjoys showers, shower this video with praise. Give me a big old thumb. Or you can watch another video I made from a different Ask Europe thread if you want to continue watching some fun, good content. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully I will see you next Sunday for let's just hope the final video from this place until I move to a different place and then maybe a house. I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.